I've covered plenty of nomination fights in Washington, but can't remember covering one that hasn't been made, at least not yet. Just when the media, much of the media, were getting tired of the Benghazi story, Susan Rice went to the Hill this week to meet with Republican senators who've been ripping her over the attack in Libya and could block her promotion as Secretary of State if President Obama decides to nominate her. Benghazi is complicated, of course, but the food fight over Rice, not so much. Here's Susan Rice misled the American people. She didn't tell them the truth in spite of all the evidence that we now know to the contrary that she had available to her. And what's the other big story of the week? Susan Rice, where they are wrongfully attacking a person who has done nothing wrong. The Republican smear campaign against Ambassador Susan Rice continues as more senators pile on. So is the coverage fair to Rice and to her detractors? Joining us now in New York, Kelly Goff political correspondent for TheRoot.com. And here in Washington, Ramesh Panuru, senior editor at National Review and a columnist for Bloomberg View. Kelly Goff, isn't it odd for the press to be covering a nomination that hasn't happened based on a closed-door meetings between Susan Rice and Republican senators where we don't know, actually know what was said? Uh, in a word, yes, it's very odd. Um, but it's not particularly odd if you look at it through the lens of some of the, the partisanship and the, the partisanism, as I like to call it, in the coverage, right? Um, originally, we had Fox News really trying to sort of push this cover up and turn it into a big uh, election related scandal. And then the Petraeus story blew wide open, which I will agree got more coverage than should, should have in an era in which we have, you know, the economy and the toilet, a lot of Americans out of work, and we were covering, you know, Broadwell, Petraeus, et cetera. And, and this is sort of the next leg of that, with the conservative media really trying to sort of push this angle that there was some cover-up. And I think that, frankly, there's some resentment that that story didn't really gain any traction that made a difference to the election. And this right. is sort of it round two, as I call Petraeus, it. overshadowed by Petraeus, as you say. Let me turn to Ramesh. Right. How's this for a classic Washington media controversy? Susan Rice delivered the talking points on TV, but some other agency wrote them, and we get to fight about that. Well, yeah, that's, that's a, a big part of the story, and uh, any story where you can actually have talking points about talking points, which is what we're increasingly seeing. I hope you didn't bring any talking debate. points today. Okay. You know, I think that the media coverage is actually shaping this, um, the results here, in that I think we are now reaching the point where if Obama doesn't nominate Susan Rice to be Secretary of State, it'll be seen as his backing down. Uh, and a lot of the liberal base, which has really gotten upset about what it sees as an outrageous attack on her, will be very upset. Because of the high profile nature of the story. Exactly, I because the coverage is treating her as though she were the nominee. As though she's the nominee, nominee in waiting. Yeah. I suspect you are right. I want to play a little bit more sound uh, for both of you. Uh, this is from MSNBC, where some liberal commentators, I emphasize some, are starting to frame this controversy that's getting all this attention, as Ramesh says, in racial terms. Let's take a listen. And frankly, it's outrageous that there is this witch hunt going on on the right about these people of color, let's face it, around this president. Eric Holder, Valerie Jarrett, now Susan Rice. He also gave us the horrible optics of he and Lindsey Graham as old white establishment folks wrongly and repeatedly attacking a much younger black woman moments after an election in which blacks and women went strongly blue. Uh, Kelly Torrey was talking there about John McCain and Lindsey Graham, but why steer this in the direction of the fact that the possible nominee, the UN ambassador, is an African American? What does that have to do with this controversy? Well, to be fair, it's actually not the liberal media. It was actually Representatives Clyburn, uh, Representatives Fudge, and other uh, African American members of Congress, and not just African American members who raised this issue. And so I actually think it would be irresponsible if the media didn't at least uh, cover what a member of Congress is floating uh, as a potential allegation. But the, these, the guys, these guys were including, quoting Congressman Clyburn. They were saying it on their own authority that they think that Susan Rice is being beat up upon unfairly, and they're entitled to their point of view, because right. she is a black woman. And that's a pretty toxic charge. Right, but the only thing I'm, the point I'm making, Howard, is that it, it would, it's not as wacky in the context of when you have members of Congress saying the same thing, right? So for, for a member of the media to say it, it's not entirely fair to say that Teray is initiating this, Wolf is initiating this, when there are members of Congress who think and say the same thing. The, the other point that I think is important to say well, is let I me actually, get, let me get to jump in and then I'll come back okay, to you. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that the, underlying charge here is patently absurd. Uh, I mean, as was actually pointed out in real time to Richard Wolf, McCain supported Condoleezza Rice's nomination to be Secretary of State. He obviously doesn't have any problem with black women being in that position. So you could say he's being partisan, but not yeah, racially motivated. Yeah, that's right. I mean, you motivated. can say it's unfair, you can say it's partisan, but I think that specific charge is, is, is just outrageous. And yeah, I, I completely agree with Kelly that co members of Congress have been making this charge, and it ought to be reported that they're making this charge. But I think commentators who are, uh, who are adding fuel to that fire are being foolish and irresponsible. Can I respond a little bit, though, on, on, on 
on one place where I really disagree is that it, I don't think anyone's going around saying Senator John McCain hates black people and is this raving racist. I do think that the, the questions, though, that they raised are worth exploring in the context of the fact of it's sort of like Howard. The only way I can explain this is, is it racist to call someone lazy? Is it racist to call someone cheap? Is it anti-Semitic to call someone cheap? No, not in and of itself. But in the historical context of our country, someone labeling a Jewish person cheap in a particular context, a black person lazy in a particular context, could be perceived as racially inflammatory. So when you have Senator McCain, who tried to convince us that Sarah Palin was qualified to be president, say that an African-American woman with a Ph.D. who is a Rhodes Scholar and a former assistant secretary of state is, quote, not qualified and not bright for what she said, it can open up questions of a cultural landmine that I do think the media would be irresponsible not to cover and asking certain questions about where that's coming from, particularly from a white man of a certain age. No, not sure I agree, but let me move on to the uh, other big topic here, and that's the fiscal cliff uh, as we face this, this deadline just a few weeks away. The president gave a speech on Friday that really struck me as somebody who follows social media closely. Let's uh, listen to what Barack Obama had to say. I want you to call. I want you to send an email, post on their Facebook wall. Uh, if you tweet then use a hashtag we're calling My2K, not Y2K, My2K, all right? Because it's about your 2K in your pocket. Now, Ramesh, that's a reference to the administration's argument that if Congress does nothing and taxes automatically rise, the average middle class family will lose more than $2,000 a year. But I'm just so struck that uh, the president is, <laughs> is, is pushing this Twitter hashtag. Is that an effective way uh, to uh, try to increase pressure on Republicans. I guess it's the new call your congressman and let him know how you feel. Um, I'm not sure that it actually is going to increase pressure on Republicans. It is going to make the president's core supporters, I think, feel engaged uh, e even after the campaign is over. Um, but I really have a hard time believing that Republican congressmen are going to be worried. Oh, my goodness. Have, have you seen the number of tweets we're getting on this? Well, on the other hand, uh, conservative uh, Republican organizations have tried to fight back. For example, the conservative Heritage Foundation bought, it's called a sponsored tweet, uh, bought from Twitter, this My2K, so that when you search for it on Twitter, you get the Heritage <laughs> Foundation's take on it before you even got Barack Obama's one day. Uh, so the social media uh, platform, I would say, is not to be minimized since so many journalists Journalists and politicians now live there. Kelly. No, look, and the studies have proven that Facebook and social media can actually increase voter turnout. So we can't entirely laugh it off. I mean, I, I think my attitude on this is we will know if the White House has really won the social media fiscal cliff battle if we see a newborn named My2K anytime soon, <laughs> since this week the first baby named Hashtag made her debut. So look, it's taken over the world and it's taken over politics. What can we say? But, but if I could just add to one point that Howard make. I think it's right to say that a lot of the impact is through journalists. You make these Twitter campaigns in order to influence the cable TV coverage, the, the network coverage. Yes, it's an echo chamber right. effect, which is one it of the reasons does. I believe coverage. that Twitter is so influential. All right, thanks very much. Ramesh Panuro, Kelly Goff for stopping by this Sunday morning.